There's an internal battle as well as an external battle. I think Yaakov is actually addressing both of these things. And they both come about because they come from your pleasures that you battle in your members. Do they not come from your pleasures? In other words, your desire in verse 2, you desire and do not have. That's your problem. Now, we've talked about this quite a bit, and I think we're going to talk about it today just to kind of make sure it's covered. I think this comes from, this is my opinion, the wants needs disconnect that people have. Now, this is all leading into a heart issue. This is all a heart issue. We're going to get to that in a couple of more verses. But this is about what's going on in you. When he says you ask evilly, his definition of evil and yours may not be the same. We've talked about that many times as well. But because some, somebody might be listening to this teaching and never heard me mention it before, evil is not limited to the things that we always think is evil, like rapists and pedophiles and murderers and this, this evil. Doing anything that's in opposition to what your Father in Heaven has told you to do is evil according to Him. That's the way He defines evil. I can promise you something. And I'm speaking on behalf of, maybe I'm wrong to do this, but I'm going to speak on behalf of everybody that ever guest speaks at any congregation anywhere. Everybody that's ever been a guest speaker can promise you they've had this experience. That at some point while they're there, somebody will come up to them, at least one, will come up to them to see if they agree with their position. In other words, they're going to come up to see, does the speaker take my side in this so that I can go to all the other people in the congregation and say, see... He agrees with me. Do you approach their Father in heaven the same way? A selfless person cannot be offended. You know why? Because there's nothing there that they have a preference in or a need for or desire for that's there to be offended. We've often talked about if you are offended, that means that whatever just happened, you aren't mature enough yet to handle it. See, that's what causes striving. Because if you feel offended, you know what you're going to do? Likely you're going to lash out at whoever it is that you felt offended you or cause the offense. Or you're going to talk about them behind their back and cause all kinds of Lashon Hara issues, evil tongue. But that's not fair. If you ever said that, then you're having this problem. Fair has nothing to do with it. Was what happened to Yeshua fair? No. The way he was treated, there was nothing fair about that. Him dying for you, nothing more unfair than that at all. The creator of the universe would have to come here, put on a flesh suit, and die for you. There's nothing fair about that. So why do we think that we have to worry about fair? I leave fair to him. You can't use the the title good as a designation ever again because Yeshua said, why do you call me good? There's none good but one. Should we now jump to the conclusion that good is not something you can call anybody? See, that's the same logic that you get in Matthew 23 when people say, well, I can't call you rabbi because he said, don't be called rabbi. Well, no, he was talking to a specific group of people who were self-aggrandizing, using it to be seen by men, and he wasn't attacking a title. This comes up every day, every day, every day relentlessly, and I will do a teaching on it, but this should be enough. Because the next verse in Matthew 23 says, don't be called father. So what, did he just say father is a terrible thing now? You can't call anybody your father? We should not be behaving this way. But see, we're not going to fix the problem until we understand what's causing the problem. Yaakov is trying to tell you what's causing the problem. You want and don't have. That's your problem. It's not much more complicated than that. Every issue you have is because you want or don't want and you're not getting your way. You know, I had somebody tell me years ago, and it's probably true, you want to make Yahweh laugh, let him know how you want things done, how you think it should go. Tell him your plan. Well, this is the way I think it should go. This is the way I think you should do it. It's absurdity. You have to be single-minded. You have to be vertically-minded You have to be Abba-minded. Yeshua said, I only do what he says. I only say what he says. I only do what he says. I'm completely focused vertically. I don't have my own opinion involved. That's not to say he doesn't have discussions where he might say something like, Abba, if it's possible to have this cup taken, he said, but nevertheless, your will be done. You can ask. 
But then you have to ask saying, but whatever you say, it's still what I'm going to do. That's not double-minded. You can have an opinion, you can have an idea, you can have a desire, but it has to still be packaged with, nevertheless, your will, I'm going to do. There's people that are still boasting, they're judging, they're, they're saying, I'm more righteous than you are, you're wrong in what you're doing. They're, they're usurping authority. You see the same thing in Matthew 23. Because what happens after the whole call no man rabbi, call no man father, all the things? After that, you get the woes. Woe unto you Pharisees, you hypocrites, you do this. And woe unto you Pharisees, you hypocrites, you do that. So what's being addressed is hypocrisy, self-aggrandizing. This is the same problem that James is addressing. Hypocrisy, self-aggrandizing, putting yourself first, judging others, stepping in and usurping authority. He's saying, don't do that when you're causing fights and you're striving. Why? Because you want to have your way, and basically that means you're right and somebody else is wrong. So now you're judging them. Leave them alone. All of you be like-minded, sympathetic, loving as brothers, tender-hearted, humble-minded. By like-minded, by the way, that doesn't mean you all agree with each other. It means that you're doing Philippians 2.5. You're letting the mind of Yeshua be in you. Be like-minded as to the right approach, even if you don't agree on everything. We can agree to not be disagreeable. We can agree to treat each other with respect. We can agree to allow each other space to grow from where you are to where you need to be. But you desire and have not. Well, I I don't like when they treat me this way. I want it to stop. Make them stop. Well, no, it may not stop. Set apart Yahweh in your heart and suffer for his sake, for righteousness' sake, and you'll be blessed. You know, in other places, we've talked about this, where we talk about how Yeshua thought it was nothing to suffer the things he suffered for the expectation of the crown that was being, was awaiting him, that was waiting for him at the right hand of the Father. If the commandments in the Torah is laid up in your heart, and if you have the proper relationship, which is to fear him, to walk in his ways, and to love him, then you're going to want to serve him with all your heart. If you're serving him with all your heart, you're loving him with all your heart, you've done all these things with all your heart, what kind of answer do you give your boss when he says, I need you to work on Saturday? Is it a really tough question? What kind of answer do you give mom who wants to serve you pork and dinner meal? What kind of, how is this a tough question if all your heart is in this focus? See, when people call me, it's because they haven't gotten their heart right yet, and so they struggle because they want to find a way out of what they know is the truth. The heart of the matter is that it's what's going on in your heart that matters most. So it is the heart or the center point of everything that you want. It's the center point of everything that you're doing right. It's the center point of everything you're doing wrong. It is the cause of every effect, it starts in the heart. Because out of the abundance of your heart, everything flows. And so if you wonder why you do what you do or don't do what you don't do, that maybe you should or shouldn't, it's because there's still something wrong in your heart. You still have attachments and emotions and desires connected to whatever it is. 